to talk about electric vehicles. Are you looking for one? What are you looking for in an electric vehicle? We've got a whole bunch of stories impacting uh, your trajectory of uh, what kind of transportation you're ultimately going to get for yourself and for your family. Uh, so I want to hear from you, 217-629-7970. That's the phone number you can call in live and local uh, to sound off about uh, what kind of electric vehicle you're in the market for. Now, uh, the state of Illinois has a rebate program ongoing. It was part of the uh, budget that started July 1. And uh, a window for you to file an application to get access to a taxpayer-funded electric vehicle rebate. It closes September 30th, but the state's then going to open up a second round on November 1st. Now, you can apply for a $4,000 taxpayer-funded rebate for an electric vehicle or $1,500 for new all-electric motorcycles. So you can get either a $4,000 rebate from taxpayers for new cars that are all-electric or $1,500 from all-electric motorcycles. So you have to file these um, applications within 90 days of the vehicle's purchase date. The total program is going to cost nearly $18 million here in the state of Illinois. So I'd like to hear from you. Are you in the market for an electric vehicle? Uh, and it looks like uh, the Biden administration going full steam ahead, or I guess um, – full wind ahead or full solar ahead. I'm not sure either way. Full electric vehicle ahead. Uh, that's uh, that's how the uh, the Biden administration kind of characterizes what's going on here. Here's Jennifer Granholm. She is Biden's energy secretary uh, talking about uh, their plans moving forward here uh, when it comes to electric vehicles and uh, a transition accelerating to the transition. As we transition to this clean economy, we want to make sure people have access to the fuels that they need to either go to work or flip on the switch, et cetera. We know it's a transition, but ultimately this is why we're pressing on the accelerator to be able to move to clean. Because if we don't have to rely upon the volatility of fossil fuels or at least uh, or of countries who are exporting fossil fuels that don't have our interests or at, my, in, at heart or don't share our values, that's really what will make us energy independent, energy secure. As we tra- So what do you think uh, as we, uh, quote, accelerate towards renewable energies? Uh, are you looking to get an electric vehicle? 217-629-7970 as the phone number. And uh, I want to hear what you're looking for in an electric vehicle. Is it something that uh, uh, you're looking for, you know, acceleration? I know some of these uh, Teslas, uh, they, they're pretty fast. Um, are you looking for an electric truck? For instance, uh, what what kind of electric vehicle are you looking for? Uh, buddy texted me before the break here, and he said uh, an all-electric longboard. So getting some kind of recreational vehicle. Uh, Megan and I, we're going to be heading to Las Vegas to go check out the um, Zion National Park and also Bryce Canyon. Uh, really looking forward to that. We're going to be doing that in about uh, a week and a half or so. Uh, but uh, part of our plans, we've already got them uh, uh, reserved. We're getting electric bicycles. And they apparently have a program out there where you get an electric bicycle and you can bike all throughout uh, some of the roadways of uh, uh, Zion National Park and also Bryce Canyon. So looking forward to that. I've even told Megan, I'm like, I kind of want to get an electric motorcycle just because I for a recreational type of vehicle. That's that sounds like a good time. Um, But uh, what kind of vehicle are you looking for here in a bit? I'll tell you what I'm looking for if I was ever going to get an electric vehicle for my own personal driving wherever I want to go. Tell you uh, uh, my thoughts coming up, but of course, 217-629-7970. Good morning. You're on WMAY. You know, I, I really don't know what these people in government are thinking. Either. You know, electric cars and all that are a nice idea, but I don't think it's going to work. I mean, we had energy independence. With, I don't know what the hell that woman was talking about. We, we're sitting on one of the biggest coal seams in, in the world. We're, we're the least polluting of all of them. I don't know why I don't know why they're constantly pushing this crap. I mean, we had cheap gasoline. We can go back to that. This is all going to fail in the end anyway. They they tried electric electric cars in the '70s and, and, and they they flopped. What do they want? 
I, I, I don't remember them trying electric vehicles in the 70s. I mean, I, <laughs> they didn't have the oh, yeah, infrastructure them, for man. that. But, uh, you know, listen, I mean, it, it, there are people who already have electric vehicles. Now, if you want to have the debate about whether or not electric vehicles are going to be too much of a draw on the electrical grid, that's, that's worthy of a debate here. Um, because, you know, I think uh, there's a certain number of percentage, a very low number of, of vehicles on the roads that are electric vehicles. But if we were somehow to... You know, make 50 plus percent of the vehicles on Illinois roads all electric, uh, including like, you know, Amazon trucks or UPS trucks or whatever the FedEx trucks may be uh, down the line. That's going to draw a substantial amount of energy from the electrical grid. Are we ready for that? I don't know. That's worth a, a little bit of debate here. But I'll tell you what I'm looking for in an uh, electric vehicle is more about. Um, uh, this uh, this idea of anonymity, <laughs> quite frankly, uh, I, I worry that uh, the technology that's being developed, including what Elon Musk's laying out, that he's going to have a completely self-driving vehicle uh, available, hopefully a, but before the end of the year, he says, in the United States and possibly even Europe. That requires, uh, you know, GPS coordinates, and uh, that sends out signals as to where you're at, and that takes away really any kind of anonymity you may have on roadways. Yeah, you've got a license plate. Law enforcement can look that up. Totally get it. They're setting up license plate reading cameras all over the place. I understand that. But it's not just the location data. It's also the ability of a vehicle to be connected to a network. And then who knows, maybe you get to a point where if you don't pay your taxes on time, the government could say, oh, we're just going to turn your car off. Or God forbid, there's another pandemic 15 years from now. And uh, they say, okay, Another stay-at-home order, and uh, to enforce that, they remotely turn your vehicle off. So I think what I'd be looking for, and maybe there's a market for this, not sure, uh, but a market for possibly having a uh, vehicle, electric vehicle, that doesn't have all of those types of uh, uh, tracking devices in them. Uh, I'd be interested to, to see if that's ever possible. Uh, maybe uh, Honda and LG are going to uh, make something like that whenever they bring $4.4 billion of investment to a possible plant in Ohio to, to manufacture electric vehicles vehicle batteries and uh, vehicles, uh, but I'm, I'm not going to be holding my breath there. Uh, 217-629-7970, good morning. You're on WMAY. Hey, good morning, Greg. Hey. Um, you know, the this whole thing with electric cars, the, the Jim Leach did an interview with the guy that's running against Mary Miller, and the one thing that he said that made sense is that when it comes to all this green stuff, we cannot rush it. We have to take our time and do it right the first time. Or it's going to cost a fortune. And if you want to do it, if you got to do it over, oh my gosh, it's going to make this bailout for the colleges look like you know, a, I don't know what. But the uh, I've seen personally a power line burn in half because it was drawing too, trying to draw too much energy through it, and so it's not a pretty sight. And I, I feel that's what's going to be happen, happening because in my area where I live, if everybody on our street uh, bought an electric car, I'd be seeing that. Yeah. But now, on the other hand, when it comes to the worldwide viewpoint of the whole thing, I've uh, only read what, to, or what China's doing. China's building coal-fired power plants. Uh, they're going to be able to economically kick our butts. Um, I've been to the... Uh, Oh, Santa Domingo earlier this year, the Dominican Republic, and they are building mega gas stations down there. I've seen it with my own eyes. Uh, you know, no, nobody else but us is going for this. So, well, and some states might have different uh, energy goals, but Illinois is edging towards getting rid of coal-fired power plants by 2035. Look at the year right well, now; it's 2022. That's what. 13 years yeah 13 now, years away uh so now i can understand that but you and i both are, are like animals in one aspect we both lost a lot of weight in our past now when you were losing your weight you were dieting and working out did you go out and buy a whole wardrobe of clothes uh, saying this is where I want to be whenever I get off my diet no it was incremental uh it was a exactly. slow process of getting that new wardrobe so you you got to take things in the right order, yeah. and there's no doubt in my mind we're going to be electric one day. I won't see it in my lifetime, but my kids might. But the the 
thing, big thing in a nutshell is that you just, it's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. Yeah, it really isn't. And uh, to try to do that through, uh, you know, increasing gas prices to make it unbearable or to try to do that by increasing taxpayer subsidies to pay for new electric vehicles for people who can afford them. Uh, that's going to impact uh, lower uh, income populations, uh, let alone, as you mentioned, the uh, the impacts on the energy grid. Good conversation. Appreciate it. Uh, it's right here with Springfield's morning.